Hi, I'm Paul and I'd like to uh, share with you something I call the Microsoft Access Form Resizer. So this is some code I put together oh, many years ago now uh, and I've used it in a lot of projects. Um, so dozens of projects, probably on hundreds of forms that I've created. Uh, so this is a, a fairly stable um, piece of code uh, and now I'm, I'm sharing it with you in case you find it useful. So what does it actually do? Um, this is some code which allows you to dynamically um, reshape the controls on your form and to move the controls on your form so that you're always making best use or your user is always getting best use of the screen real estate that they have available. So uh, the typical scenario that, that we're dealing with these days is you've got um, mobile workers who have laptops and some of the time they're just working on the laptop screen which is one resolution, a fairly small size usually. Uh, and then when they get back to their desk they plug it into a nice big monitor. So they want their forms to fit on their laptop screen when they're working on the laptop and not have to do lots of scrolling around. Uh, but when they get back to their desk and they're working in a um, larger screen environment, they want to be able to have those controls take up the full space of, um, of the screen that they are using. So let's see a little demonstration. I'll run through a few demonstrations and then I'll show you how you can add this to your own solutions. Uh, I'm making the code freely available. Um, there's no charges, nothing is locked, everything is open. Uh, and it's probably just worth saying as well at this point that there's no um, API calls, there's no uh, third party things that you need to install. This is all plain vanilla access code that you can add to your solutions uh, and get these resizing features straight away. So here I've got a, a form where I've got a bunch of controls in here. So the gray bits with the writing in them are the, are the controls. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to show you that we can resize this to any dimensions and the controls will move to make best use of the size of the form. So there we are. So things are moving, moving around. OK, so if you've used anchoring, it's kind of similar, but with anchoring, uh, you can't do what we're doing here where we've got multiple controls side by side and each control is growing by only a, a fraction of the, um, of the width or the height that the form is growing by. So I'll just uh, move things around again in a moment, resize things again in a moment. But um, have a look at these four controls on this row um, and then have a look at these two controls underneath. So let's um, start sizing again. So first of all, look at those four controls in the second line. So as this form gets bigger and smaller, each of those controls is getting bigger as well. So as we make it wider, each control is growing in width by one quarter of the width that the form overall has increased by and also the controls are moving to get out of the way of the control to their left. And then if we have a look at the two larger boxes in the middle, we're doing something similar in the vertical plane. So each of those boxes is growing as we make the screen taller and each box is growing by half the rate that the form overall grows by. If you have a look at the very bottom line, um, Imagine that the, um, that the first control and the last control are perhaps um, a date and a number, and we never need to make these controls any wider. Okay, So even on the laptop, these controls are always big enough to give you the full date uh, or the full reference number. But perhaps these other two controls here in the middle of the bottom line, maybe their first name and, and last name. And in their standard size, they'll fit in most, most first name and last names. But if you've got a really long first name, a really long last name, that won't quite fit in. So what we want to do is we want to say, right, when we make our form bigger, the dates and the reference numbers, no point in making those any wider. We're just going to get a bunch of white space that's no good to us. But the, 
for names, well, perhaps it is make worth making those wider because sometimes the name will be longer than the control. So let's just do some resizing again. You can see there that I've made the first control and the last control on that bottom row. So they don't actually change size, whereas the two controls in the middle, they do. In that case, each control in the middle is, is growing by 50% of the rate that the, um, that the overall form width is changing by. So you've got complete control over how your uh, controls are going to respond to the resizing events. Now, before I show you how to add this to your solution, let's just um, quickly show you a couple of other examples. Okay, this will actually work with, with tab controls. So uh, let's um, get that going. So here we go. So we've got tab controls in there. I've only got one page in each tab control just to uh, just to show that this does actually work. There we go. And you can even have a subform. And it also works whether we are resizing from an edge of the form or whether we are maximizing and restoring within the Access application, or even if we are resizing the appla Access application itself. If I can just grab the edge of it here. There we are, so it will resize. And also if I maximize or restore the Access application itself, Again, we can see it's all responding. So whichever method the user is using to manage the windows on their machine, these screens are going to still respond to that and to shuffle your controls around so that the, um, the space is working effectively. OK, so in terms of adding this to your solution, there are two um, modules to add. So the main one is this uh, form resizer. This is where all the resizing magic goes on. This uh, other one is um, a, a standard errors uh, module. And that's just there because um, my form resizer class, when there's an error, it passes that error through to this standard error handling module. I'll do another session on the standard error handling module. Uh, standard error handling module, because that's a really useful thing, um, I think, to have in your solutions. That's something that uh, cuts down on a lot of work and a lot of um, coding around error handling. Uh, if you don't like my error handler, then you can substitute it for your own, or you can just modify the error handlers inside the uh, form resize code so that you don't need a, a separate bit of code there at all. Um, so you need to add those. What else do you need to do to get this working? Let's just go to one of our examples again. You need to um, add a little bit of code behind each form where you want these uh, controls to be able to move. So let's just have a look at that code. So when I say a little bit, I really do mean just a little bit. We've got one line of code which is um, declaring an instance of our form resize class, then when we load the form, we're initializing that class. What's happening behind the scenes there, if you're interested, is um, the form resize code will have a look at all of your controls, have a look at their starting positions, have a look at the, um, uh, the details you've put in to specify how they should grow and how they should move. And I'll show you how to put that in in just a second. So it's just initializing, getting everything set up. And then we need to have a little bit of code for the resize event so that our class then can have a look at the information that it recorded when it initialized, which is where all your controls started off and what size they were, plus what your scaling dimensions are, and then it does all of the applying to, to move those controls and to change their dimensions. We have to have uh, a little comment in here. We're using a, a technique which is called event syncing, so that when the resize event occurs on your form, it actually triggers 
the resize event in the, um, the class. Uh, but that will only actually happen if you've got some code under the form resize event, even if it's only a comment. So you have to have something there. Um, make sure you do actually leave a comment. Don't, don't cry just putting this in because then when you close the form and reopen it, Access will say, oh, well, look, there's, uh, there's only empty space inside this um, routine and, and it will just delete the whole thing out. So make sure that you have a little... Um, piece of uh, comment in there if you don't have any other code on your resize event. So we add that code uh, and then all we need to do is for each control we can go into the tag property which is under the other page of your property sheet and then you just use these keywords grow y grow x. There's also um, move y and move x so grow is for stretching move is for moving x is for the horizontal plane y is for the vertical plane and then what you do is you just put in the factor or the proportion that you want the thing to grow or move by so in this case when the form is increased in width the width of this control its grow x factor that's going to grow by 0 0.25, by 25%. So I've got four controls in a row here, and each one is going to grow by 25% of the extra space that is available as you make the form wider. So we've also got um, moves in here as well. So if we have a look at this row, the first one on here, we're just saying, look, just, just grow the width of this by one quarter. The next one, we're saying, well, look, I need to move it out the way. So this needs to move at a rate of a quarter. And then this can grow at a rate of 0.25. The next one is also going to grow at the rate of 0.25. But it now needs to move at a rate of 0 0.5. Because this one was growing at 0.25. This one was growing at 0.25. This one, the third one, needs to move out of the way. So that's moving at a rate of 0 0.5. The next one is going to move at a rate of 0 0.5, it's growing at a rate of um, 0.25. So effectively, when you combine the growth and the moving, the, the right-hand edge of this control is going to remain a consistent width away from the right-hand edge of the form itself. So that's all you need to do. You just need to put the, um, the tag properties in. Um, Let's just show. So it's the same thing with any control. So these are the tab controls on here. And in my example, um, you can see that I have written in each control um, what its grow and move x and y's are so that you can use these as, a, as an example to try and get used to how this works. Tabs are a little bit interesting because you've got the, the tab control moving and the controls inside the tab control moving so you've got to kind of um, um, combine some of these uh, some of these things so the tab control here is going to uh, move um, when this width of the form changes so it's going to move x at, at 0 0.5 uh, and in this one, we've also got to tell it to move x 0 0.5 as well. Right. Uh, and in our subform, our example with the subform, oh, sorry, the example with the subform uses that one with the tab. So let's close the tab one and then into the subform one. So you've just got to make sure in your subform control that you've also got your tag uh, properties in there to say how you want this subform to behave as the main form that it is on uh, moves around as well. So that's all there is to it. It's very straightforward um, to, to set up. Not many lines of code in there. 
What you then have to do, as I say, is obviously just go through each of your controls and play with these tag properties. It takes a little bit of getting used to. What you want to do when you're doing this is to put a few in and then test it and see how it's going. Because if you get these wrong, then you're going to end up with, with overlapping controls. So, for example, if I change this one, so instead of it being GrowX 0.5, I've made it just GrowX. So let's see how that then behaves. What we'll end up with, there we go, I think you can see it's starting to happen now is that the controls are starting to to overlap okay so move it back you can see there's a little gap between those first two grey controls in the first uh, tab control on the screen there but as I make it wider okay eventually those controls are kind of overlapping each other and, and merging be more visible if I put a, a border on it but I think you probably get the uh, the idea there so when you're putting it together, make sure you stop every so often and resize your form a little bit and just make sure that you're not uh, causing the controls to overlap because you've got one of these factors wrong or you've got a, an X where you should have a Y or, or whatever. Okay, so that's it. Um, along with the code, uh, there's also uh, a zip of the examples that I've shown you just now um, and as I say these have written in them what the tags are what the grow X and the grow Y and the move X and the move Y are for these to get these to behave as they are in this particular example so you've got something to, to follow here so I hope you find that useful um, please drop me a note in the comments um, if you need more explanation, if you want to know how this works behind the scenes, if you want an explanation of how the code works, let me know um, and uh, I can always do another, another video. Um, the links uh, for the code are on GitHub, so if you do find a bug um, or you think of some way of improving this, then um, please either get in touch through YouTube or directly on GitHub um, by submitting your improvements and your suggestions and then we can maybe roll it into the, the final solution. So thank you very much for watching and um, good luck with it. Go out there and build some really fancy forms. Bye for now.